Did he rescue your soul? I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner.
salvation's plan Oh, the grace that brought it down to man Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span On Calvary There your mercy and your grace was free There your pardon multiplied to me salvation's plan Oh, the grace that brought it down to man Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary Sing it out There your mercy and your grace was free There your pardon multiplied to me And your grace was free. Sing it out. There your pardon multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary.
Am I on now? Hey, better now. Okay. There's a scene in the 1996 movie Independence Day, and Will Smith has done his cool flying action, and uh, the alien, they've got alien ships all over the world, and this alien ship is following him through the canyons, and he finally sends his parachute back to, so the alien can't see, and the alien crashes, and so Will Smith drags him back to the base. It happens to be Area 51 that nobody knows about. So they've got the alien down in the basement, and a uh, um, series of events take place, and the president is actually talking to the alien, saying, can there be a peace between us? And the alien says, no peace. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about peace. I want to center on the story of Joseph. Okay, we're going to look at a lot of scripture today because <clears throat> scripture has better ideas than I do. So we're going to look at a lot of scripture. Genesis 37, we're going to start in verse 3 and 4. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of the rest of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Wow. Jealousy and hatred. Is any of that happening today? There's no peace so far in this story. So... Moving on to verse 14, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase a lot of scripture as we go. I'm going to give you the reference. But in uh, verse 14, so his father says to Joseph, go and check on your brothers. They're out tending the flocks. I need you to go check on them for me. So um, Hebron is 20 miles south of Jerusalem, and that's where this journey started. So that's about a day's journey, 20 to 25 miles is a day's journey. So we can look at this slide. There it is. And Hebron is down there at the number one. So first he ends up up at Shechem, and then finally he ends up up by Dothan, where his brothers are. So he's gone like 45 miles. You know, he's gone like two and a half days journey to find his brothers, you know. I, I don't know. I guess they can see a long way off out there for him to know how to find his brothers. I don't know. So here he is. He's gone 40 miles north of Jerusalem. Well, his brothers see him in the distance. And so before he can get there, they plotted to kill him. Hey, hey, hey. these are nice brothers. I'm sure glad I don't have brothers like that, right? Reminds me of how many movies today are about revenge. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get even. You did this to me, I'm going to get even. And we've got that going on here in Genesis. Man alive. So, Joseph gets there to his brothers. They snatch his robe right off of him. And they throw him in the cistern. Now, I always heard this story, they threw him in the well. And... Studying for this, I found out that a well is, is natural. You know, it has water in it from, the, from underground. But a cistern is just where they've dug out in the bedrock. And so they've got it there for storing water. But according to the Bible, there was no water in the, sep the cistern at this point. It was empty. So here he is. He's in the bottom. So Judah, one of the brothers, says... You know, if we kill him, we won't gain anything. So let's sell him to some traders. And this is in verses 26, 27, 28. Let's tell him, sell him to some traders so they get 20 shekels of sil silver, selling him to the Midianite merchants. So now the merchants take him off to Egypt. So here he is. He's like 250 miles away from home. 
He's got nobody. How is he feeling? Is he feeling betrayed? Is he feeling angry? Is he feeling hurt? You know? Is he saying, God, I just went to do like my father asked me. I just went to check on my brothers, and now I'm in Egypt. My goodness, what are you doing? I don't know. I can relate to that sometimes. <laughs> okay, so the brothers got Joseph's robe, and they killed the goat, and they dipped the robe in the blood. I'm in verses 31, 32, well, 31 through 34. And uh, so they, they've doctored up the robe. They take it back to Dad, and uh, they say, we found the robe. I don't know. Some animal must have got to him. Um, so Jacob, his father, tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned his son for many days. So we pick it up in verse 35. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Wow. I mean, he is just so upset that nobody can comfort him. Man, this is starting to look like a soap opera. I mean, Joseph doesn't have peace. Do you think the brothers have peace? I'm, I'm kind of thinking not. You know, Joseph doesn't have peace. The brothers don't have peace peace dad doesn't have peace there is no peace in this story what is this doing in Genesis well we have to go back to Genesis chapter 3 let's talk about when sin when sin entered the world with Adam and Eve 17 through 19 of Genesis 3 God said to Adam, because you listened to your wife, ate the fruit from the tree which I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food for all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. I mean, you know, this is pretty serious stuff. They had, they had it easy, you know. They had a perfect life. And now all of a sudden, sin comes in and just ruins their whole world. Sin just made a mess of things. Let's look in the New Testament at a story uh, where the Jewish leaders brought to Jesus a woman caught in adultery. And according to Jewish law, that meant she should be stoned. So they are trying to, trying to get him to uh, pronounce the verdict on her, but he just kneels down in the dirt, and he's just sketches with his fingers. We don't know what he had to say. Um, and so then in John chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Because while he's been riding in, in, the, in the dirt, one by one, they're just, they're just drifting away. You know, so we're left with just Jesus and the woman. Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. King James Version says, go and sin no more. And when we turn away from our sin, repent, we can receive forgiveness. I don't condemn you. So, so many times we think in terms of, well, God can't possibly love me, Jesus can't possibly love me because I did this or I've done that. But Jesus says, go and sin no more. I forgive you. I don't condemn you. Great message. Great message. Let's look at 1 John 1, 8. 
If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So we have to, first of all, accept that, that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we have to accept that. And then in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. These are two cool verses. Okay? It establishes our response and God's response to that. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So let's think about, so, so we've got to, uh, those two principles going on, okay? Um, but what else do we need for peace? Joseph in the cistern, he's sold off. Do, do, do. There we go. What happened in my notes? I must have skipped a little part. Let's go back to, to Joseph's story. Let's finish Joseph's story off. Um, he is in Egypt. He becomes a slave, a servant of one of Pharaoh's officials named Potiphar. Potiphar um, finds him to be trustworthy, and he promotes him to head of the house. So, hey, things are looking up for Joseph. Okay, he's got, got thrown in the cistern, got sold. He's 250 miles away from home. He knows nobody. But somehow, God manages to get him promoted. So, then, the bottom falls out again because Potiphar's wife accuses Joseph of something he didn't do. So, back to prison. He's out of here. So while he's in prison, the pharaoh has, the king has some dreams. And the dreams are about seven years of, fan, of uh, feast, seven years of, of plenty, and seven years of famine. Okay, a lot of you know that story. But the important part is that Joseph interpreted the dreams. Nobody else could. So, hey, he gets a promotion again. Okay? So now the king has him working for him. He's now the king's right-hand man. So, yeah, Joseph going, man, God, what are you doing? You know? This happens, this happens, this happens. Now all of a sudden I'm promoted to second in command for the king? Whoa. All right, so now Joseph knows that there's going to be seven good years of plenty. So during those seven good years, they save. They put away their grain. And then the famine hits. Well, the famine also hit 250 miles away. Okay, so Joseph's father says to his brothers, go over to Egypt and see if you can get some grain. All right, now it gets cool because now here he is. Joseph is standing in front of his brothers and he says, where's, where's that verse? Where's that verse? Um, I kind of got off, off track here somewhere. Anyway, maybe you can find the verse. Um, where he says, you, uh, God, um, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Um, you know, God knew exactly what he was doing. And Joseph finally understood that God was working through this whole thing. And all these negative things that happened to him were really part of what God was engineering in his life 
for the day when this famine would occur and Joseph would save the lives of his family. So Joseph says to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God knew, God knew what the outcome was. God knew. So, Genesis 50-20. Well, Richard doesn't have that one. I don't know if he can jump that one up there real quick. Oh, there it is. I found it. Um, Genesis 45-5 is the verse that I was talking about where jo Joseph says, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. So, can any of us relate to that story of how, you know, we go through things and we just don't understand and we're like crying out to God saying, God, what are you doing in my life? I do not understand this. And then, and then time goes by and all of a sudden, oh, that's what you were doing. Okay. So, what can help us have peace in our lives? Okay. Jesus said in John 16:33, I messed you up, Richard. I apologize. Jesus said in, in John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. So Jesus wants us to have peace, evidently. Peace is mentioned over 400 times in the King James Version of the Bible. Somehow, we've, we've missed the importance of peace. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Yeah. Yeah. You think that was, that was working for Joseph in the bottom of the cistern? I don't know. Um, he didn't have Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to, to kind of remind himself that God is working if we just submit to him. And one of the cool things to me about this is he will make your path straight. It doesn't say if, if, you, if you do everything right, I will make your path straight. It just says, in all my ways, submit to him and he will make my path straight. So it's his responsibility to take care of me. Oh, isn't that cool? Okay. You know, yes, I have to make good decisions and so forth. But what happens if I get off the track? What happens if I, you know, kind of go over this way? I, Christians spend a lot of time, what's God's will for me? God's will, will for you is to submit to him and he will make your path straight. You know, what's God's will for me is to follow. So that gives me freedom, that part, about he will make my path straight. That makes it freedom. So if, if, I'm, if I'm seeing this right, repentance and forgiveness and trust is the formula for peace. First, I have to repent of my sin, allow him to forgive me, and then 
trust and I can have peace. All right, let's look at those next verses, Richard. Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah 9, 6. <laughs> I was, I was in or, I'm in order again now. <laughs> For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I just kind of looked up a few verses. I did a peace search in one of the Bible study programs, and these were some of the ones that jumped out to me. Prince of Peace. Well, if we're calling him the Prince of Peace, Prince must, uh, peace must be important. Next one, Acts 10.36. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ who is Lord of all. Okay, so he's the prince of peace. We have the good news of peace. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Man, this peace is looking more and more important. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So the fruit of the Spirit, if we have the Spirit of God living in us, then the fruit should be happening in our lives. And one of those is peace. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Wow. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Man, are we getting the idea that peace is important? Romans 15, 13. We read this earlier. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Wow. So, I ask the question, can there be peace? Well, maybe not in the world that we live in, but according to Scripture, there can be peace within. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We can have peace if we repent, receive God's forgiveness, and trust the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let me sing a little verse of a little song that I thought about when I was thinking about this. You got this mic on, Larry? Oh, never mind. You don't need that mic on, Larry. Where'd it go? There it is. Oh. This is a song written in 1973. Larry didn't even know about this song. It's not often that I stump him on a song. Got to turn the amp on. There we are. This is off an old album by Barry McGuire. Sometimes 
when I am thinking, just kind of halfway sleeping. One thought is always the same. It's all about how rich I am to have a hold of my Savior's hand. That's why I'm praising His name. He gives me peace, wonderful peace, holding on to the Savior's hand. I found peace, wonderful peace, holding on to the Savior's hand. Peace is important, I think. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this teaching from your word this morning. Thank you for showing us that we can have peace and how important it is in our lives. We thank you for your love and sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Larry. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Would, could you just show some love to Brother Don today? I appreciate him sharing this. Don is um, a good, very good friend. Oh, I don't know. I think 30, some, you know, 30 years is a good friend. We got something like that. Back to Over. The, back to the 80s. And uh, I appreciate Don. He has a heart for Jesus. Loves people. And is a very, very talented and giving person. God has given him great talents that not everybody has. And I, I, he's one of our technicians. Um, and more. He just helps in so many ways. Just allows himself to be used uh, by the Holy Spirit in whichever way God wants to use him. And that's that's what I would suggest that we do, right? Allow God to use us in whatever way he wants to. I appreciate what Don said today, and we want to close giving you an opportunity to accept the Prince of Peace today. Because Jesus Christ, one of his descriptions in the Word of God is the Prince of Peace. Now we know there's this Prince of the, over this planet, the evil one, Satan, okay? And he was given this place to reign, and we are actually feeling it right now. Do you not feel this rain going on that this is really intensifying? And great thing is God only gave him a short time to do this, okay? He did not give him forever to do this. And Satan knows his time is coming short. His time is coming, and his time is short. And so what I want to say to you today is if you're like me and you're frustrated and you're worried about tomorrow and worried about what's going to happen in November, whoa, is that like on everybody's mind? Some people say, well, if this happens, it's going to be terrible. And if this happens, this is going to be terrible. You know, how about this? How about we realize that God is in control and he's given us a ministry of prayer. And Don, Don talked about this so wonderfully. And, um, and it's that we give ourselves to the Lord in prayer, okay? That God will give us the peace that we need in every situation. Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything. But, so don't just go, throw up your hands and go, well, que sera, sera. Is that the song we're playing? 
whatever will be. No, he says, don't be anxious about it. Don't lay awake at night. Don't worry about what's going on with your family. Don't worry about the economy. Don't worry about it. You can't change any of that by your worrying. But in every situation, no matter what it is, by number one, what does it say, Don? By prayer. Yeah, both Dons. By prayer. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, so you don't become a grumbler, but you're thanking God, present your request to God. Just, let me tell you what, sometimes that's all you got is you're laying in bed and you're thinking about it. You're thinking about the test that you didn't have time to study for like you wanted to, right? And it gets under your skin and you're like, you know, the students, I know, I see them. I see them, they come in here and it's like, you can tell they're uptight. They can't wait to get out of church. They got to go to lab. They got to go study some more. They got to get it done before the test. We do the best that we can. You have to study. You have to work. You have to do what you can do. But ask God to do what only he can do, okay? Because he's a miracle working God and he's an in control God. He's not out of control and nothing slipped through his fingers, everybody. I love what Don said today. And Jacob, have you ever been on Jacob's side? Parents, what's, where's my child? What's happened to them? I've lost them. I mean, for him, it, he thought he had died, but how many of us, maybe we haven't suffered the loss of a, a child, but we're wondering what is going on? Why do they think this way? Why do they talk this way? Why do they do these things? And we have a lot of restless nights, don't we? Or maybe that relative or that brother or that sister or whoever it is. And we're like Jacob. And we have, and let me tell you what, through no fault of his own, sin interfered with his perfect life. But the great thing that Don was bringing out today is God is working in your life and in your family in ways that you cannot see. And when the end result, it was beautiful, wasn't it? What God did, it was miraculous. God had a purpose for Joseph's life. And now maybe you've been like Joseph, the other part of that story. What's happened to me? My life has been hijacked. I didn't ask for this. What am I gonna do? I'm out of my element. My perfect life is gone. Have you ever had a perfect life and something interrupted your perfect life? No fault of your own, it just happened. But Joseph stayed true to God. And I, I am sure that even though Philippians hadn't been written yet, <laughs> that, that letter hadn't been written, that's exactly what we're seeing in Joseph's life that Don was bringing out through prayer through prayer. What is that? Trusting God for your circumstance. It doesn't. So peace is not a lack of conflict. Peace is not a lack of conflict. You hear what I'm saying? You may have conflict left and right on top of you, Warren. It may be squishing you like a bug, but it doesn't matter because in that circumstance, we find peace because we trust God. God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is happening. But I know you're still God. You have not changed. You are still the wonder-working, miracle-working, loving God who loves me more than anyone else. And I know you know where I'm at. And you've got this under control, even though I'm out of control. So we don't know. We don't know why things happen. We don't have explanations. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace scripture it says do not let your hearts be troubled proverbs 3 5 and 6 let me end with this because i want i want to i want to give you an assurance that what don is saying today is 100 percent true 100 percent true don said it he just likes the word of god better than his own ideas boy there you go how about that one the Word of God over your Twitter feed, the Word of God over your news feed, the Word of God over your Facebook feed, the Word of God over what everybody else is saying, you cannot go wrong. The Word of God is true, and the Word of God does not change over time. And so let's go to that verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for your presence here today. I thank you for using Don to bring this, this truth to our lives. I need peace so badly right now. Every day, something wants to interrupt the peace that I have in you. Something wants to just crush it. Something wants to invade my life. It's the times that we live in, but it's also always been that way. Satan wants to steal the peace that he want. He doesn't want us to. He doesn't want us to have this. He wants us to be upset. He wants us to be divided. He wants us to wonder what's going on. He wants us to live with doubt. But God, we trust in you today. And I pray for anyone here. Hey, we've all been in that. We've all been there. Our life is upset. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's next. Let me challenge you today. Whether you're watching us, whether you're watching this right now, live or a taped version of this, it doesn't matter. This is meant for you today. If you're watching us, I want you to know. Whether you're in this room or you're watching us today, I believe God wants you to know. My peace I leave with you, not as the world. I love that. My peace I give to you. The world thinks that it has peace. The world thinks that it has the answers. Guys, God, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Andre Crouch wrote that years ago, and it's true to this day. So let me pray with you. Father God, I pray that you would touch each individual in this room and those who are watching, listening today. God, may your Holy Spirit invade their circumstance. And Lord, give them a boldness to trust you. Lord, give them faith to trust you today. That no matter what happens, no matter where they're at, no matter what the circumstance is, you are still God. And you are at work in their lives like we saw in Jacob and Joseph and others, Lord, that were mentioned today. They learned to trust you. Lord, help us to learn to trust you. Now I pray for those today, like myself, struggling with today's present circumstances. God, we, you didn't say we'd understand everything. We, you just said, trust you. You didn't say there'd be an an, we'd have an answer for everything. You just said, trust you. So God, let's focus on you. Let's trust you. And let's do like the word says, pray, petition you, God, for our country, for our families, for whatever's going on in our life. We offer these things up to you in Christ's name. God, now just deliver that peace into people's lives. Deliver that peace into us. Now that we've opened that channel of trust, now just bring that into our lives, God. Just flood us with your peace. Peace. Sing that, Shane. Peace. Wonder. 